Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh and you're watching Our History. Today we are focusing on Dingane. Dingane, Ka Senza Ngakona, Zulu, commonly referred to as Dingane or Dingan, was a Zulu prince who became king of the Zulu kingdom in 1828 after assassinating his brother, Shaka Zulu. He set up his royal capital, Ngungundlovu, and one of the numerous military encampments or kraals in the Emakosini Valley just south of the White Umfalozi River on the slope of Lion Hill, rise to power. Dingani came to power in 1828 after assassinating his half-brother Shaga with the help of another brother Umhlangana as well as Mbopa, Shaka's bodyguard. They were traditionally said to have killed Shaka because of his increasingly brutal behavior after the death of his mother Nandi. The assassination took place at present-day Stanger. Governance and Reverence Captain Alan Gardiner related that Dingane was revered as a great idol of the Zulu nation, while Reverend Francis Owen, who observed his rule at close quarters while stationed at Mgungundlov, highlighted several aspects of his despotic governance. Dingane's subjects applied godlike attributes to him, not admitting, for instance, that his reign might have had a beginning. He was deemed immortal, one who was neither born nor would never die. When asked when his reign started, his subjects replied, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. At their morning and evening meals, after receiving the distributed meal, they rose, exclaimed with raised hands, Thou that art greater than the heavens. The habit of Dingane's ministers, concubines and servants was not to think, act or speak except at Dingane's suggestion or command. Owen observed that even Dingane's prime minister, Ndlela Kasompisi refused to pay him a visit when such a visit was not expressly ordered by the king, nor would anyone grind Owen a small amount of corn or sit down with him for a prayer if they had not been ordered to do so. Dingane kept his 500 or so concubines in a severe bondage. He referred to them as his sisters or children and placed them in various ranks. They could leave the royal enclosure only with his permission and when doing so were not allowed to cast an eye on any man or boy. Owen observed them a few times outside the palace, once when he brought out to sing and also when they were instructed to bring him thatch for his hut. Some would run away when the opportunity availed, only to be apprehended and executed. Though Dingane allowed Owen to reside just outside his capital, he considered the Christian faith a fiction of English, which was of no use to him or his subjects. On a particular Sunday, he did allow Owen to expound the main precepts of Christianity before an assembly of almost 1,000 Zulu men. These were assembled at the center of the Umgumgundlovu enclosure, supplied with beer and seated in a semicircle. A few rows deep, Dingane reacted with some irritation to the message, proclaiming that it was old news to them and incompatible with their views. I and my people believe there is only one God. I am that God. I am the great chief the god of the living, Umatiwane, whom I killed, was the great chief of the wicked. Royal enclosure, Isigojo, at Ungungundlovu. Tingani built his capital city of Ungungundlovu in 1829 and enlarged it five years later. Ungungundlovu was built according to the characteristic layout of a Zulu military settlement. The Ikanda consisted of a large central circular parade ground Isibaya Esikulu, surrounded by warriors' barracks, which were called Ushangoti, and the storage huts for their shields. The Isibaya was entered from the north. The royal enclosure, or Isigodlo, was on the southern side of the complex, directly opposite the main entrance. The king, his mistress, and the female attendants, because Dingani never married officially, a total of at least 500 people resided there. The women were divided into two groups, the black Isigodlo and the white Isigodlo. The black Isigodlo comprised about 100 privileged women and within that group was another elite, the Baje, the smaller number of girls favored by the king as his mistresses. The small settlement was built for them behind the main complex where they could enjoy some privacy. The remainder of the king's women were the white Isigoyo. They were mainly girls presented to the king by his important subjects. He also selected other girls at the annual first fruit ceremony. A huge half moon shaped area was included in the Black Isigodlo, where the women and the king sang and danced. The huts at the Black Isigodlo 
were divided into compartments of about three huts each, enclosed by a two meter high hedge of intertwined whites, which created a network of passages. The king's private hut, Ilau, was located in one such triangular compartment and had three or four entrances. His hut was very large and was kept very neat by attendants. It could easily accommodate 50 people. Modern archaeological excavations have revealed that the floor of this large hut was approximately 10 meters in diameter. Archaeologists found evidence inside the hut of 22 large supporting posts completely covered in glass beads. These had been noted in historical accounts by Peter Tief, leader of the Fur Trackers, and the British missionaries Champion and Owen. On the south side, just behind the main complex, there were three separate enclosed groups of huts. The center group was used by the Ubeje woman of the Black Isigodlo. In this area, they initiated chosen young girls into service of the king. Rebellion Dingane lacked Shaka's military and leadership skills. Rebel chiefs broke away from his rule. Chiefs who fell out of favor with Dingane fled the country as Chief Singabane did. Those subjects of Singabane who were not able to flee with him were rounded up in their refuges and massacred. The dissension was exacerbated by armed conflict with the newly arrived Fuhr trackers. Conflict with Fuhr trackers. In November 1837, Dingane met Pitritif, leader of the Fur Trackers. In return for recovering some stolen cattle, Dingane signed a deed of cession of lands written in English to the Fur Trackers. It is generally believed that Dingane knew what he was signing, although he could not have had any formal education, have read the contents of the document, or have understood the concept of permanent land ownership, since it was not a custom of the Zulus to assign land to individuals permanently. On the 6th of February 1838, after two days of feasting, the chief had Retief and his diplomatic party killed. They had been told to leave their firearms outside the royal kraal. Suddenly, when the dancing had reached a frenzied climax, Dingane leapt to his feet and shouted, Bulalani Abataketi, kill the wizards. The men were totally overpowered and dragged away to the hill Kwa Matiwane, named after a chief who had been killed there. Retief and his men were killed. It is alleged by some that they were killed because they withheld some of the cattle recovered from Chief Sekonyela. The general opinion is that Dingane did not wish to yield the land ceded to them in the treaty and mistrusted the presence of the Fur Trackers. At the same time, Dingane's forces killed Retief's undefended trek party, about 500 Boers and native servants including women and children. The Boers called it Viennan Massacre. The nearby present-day town of Viennan Dutch for weeping, was named by early settlers in memory of the massacre. In a further act of war, Dingani ordered his army to seek and kill the group of Fur Trackers under Andris Pretorius. The Zulu MPs attacked the Fur Tracker encampment, but they were defeated in the ensuing Battle of Blood River. An estimated 3,000 Zulus were killed and three Fur Trackers were slightly wounded. Dingani's commander of the battle was Ndlela Kosompisi. Overthrow and Death in January 1840, Pretorius and a force of 400 Boers helped Mpande in his revolt against Dingane, which resulted in the latter's overthrow and death. At the Battle of Mkorkon, many of Dingane's own men deserted to Mpande's army. Dingane had his general, Ndlela Karsompisi, executed, and with a few followers, he sought refuge in Nyawo territory on the Lubombo mountains. A group of Nyawo and Swazi assassinated him in Tlatikulu forest. He was succeeded as king by Mpande, who was a half-brother of both Dingane and Shaka. Dingane's grave is near Ingwavuma in the Tlatikulu forest, an hour's drive from the Tembe Elephant Park. I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoy this, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And YouTube will let you know as soon as we release our next subject. Stay safe and stay strong.